Well, I'm Kathy Murphy from the Iowa Bicycle Coalition, and I'd like to thank you for joining this webinar. If you're curious about riding your bike to work instead of driving, you're at the right place. Today is the second in a series of webinars on bike commuting. Our focus today is on how to carry your stuff, how to be presentable at work once you arrive, and how to prepare for weather. So we've drawn upon the collective expertise of the members of the Iowa Bicycle Coalition to give you the best advice possible. They have their shared their experiences to give you ideas about what works for bicycling commuting. If you know a bike commuter at your workplace, ask them how to do it. Bike commuters are almost always willing to share their experience. If there aren't any bike commuters in your social circle, definitely consult a local bike shop. And today we've got some experts who commute by bike, who have decided to share their uh, experiences with us. So this webinar is made possible, I'm sorry, this ebook is made possible by the members and supporters of the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. This organization is a grassroots movement of bicyclists from across Iowa to make bicycling safe and accessible for all. The mission at the Iowa Bicycle Coalition is to promote safe and enjoyable bicycling in Iowa through education, events, better policy, and growing a community of supporters. You can join today. Uh, it's on the screen there, iowabicyclecoalition.org backslash J-O-I-N. So let's meet our experts. We've got Dory Jansma, who is from Des Moines. Hey, Dory. Good morning. Oh, it's afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, give us a 15-second version of who you are and where you're from and what you do. My name is Dory Jansma. I own an insurance agency in the East Village down in Des Moines. Um, a longtime cyclist. I started commuting probably about, oh, six years ago and really have um, learned a lot about <laughs> different things you can do to make your commute easier and um, just more efficient. And I also do a lot of bike valets. So if you ever come to Des Moines for a festival, a lot of the times you're going to see bike valets that I put on at the art festival. Um, the um, World Food Festival, Pride Festival. Anyway, that's what I got. Excellent. And the photograph, love that bicycle of yours. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. And then we've got Matthew Van Manen, who goes by Mateo. Hello, Mateo. Hey, Kathy. Thanks for having me. Sure. I'm Give from us... Cedar Rapids. Yep. I'm from Cedar Rapids. I work at Transamerica Aegon, and I have been commuting by bike probably 10 years or so, and uh, it really helps me uh, deal with the stress of corporate America. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I believe you commuted in the pouring down rain yesterday morning, didn't you? I did for the official kickoff of Bike to Work Week. Yeah, yeah, great. And then we've got Andrea Cohen. I love this photograph, Andrea. Oh, man, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I live in Iowa City. I work at World of Bikes, and I have for about the last six years. I've been commuting for about ten years um, as a carless college student, and now as a, I have a fairly functional truck, but my bikes are much more um, enjoyable to ride than the, the truck is, so I, I commute every day. I also drive a school bus, so that's my other form of transportation, I suppose. So uh, commuting, yeah, it just kind of calms me down and gives me a level head and makes sure that I'm on time, really. So it's a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, why commute by bicycle in Iowa? I think our experts have already mentioned a few of those benefits. Um, as far as health benefits go, there are clear physical health benefits of bicycle commuting. This is pretty cool. A 2001, 2011 study from the University of Northern Iowa highlighted Iowa bicyclists enjoy more than a $70 million savings on health costs, and that's specific to Iowa, which is pretty crazy. And I think both Mateo and Andrea mentioned um, the stress relief that biking um, gives you, so that's a segue to that right there. As far as environmental benefits, sus sustainability is a rapidly emerging priority in Iowa, and sustainability is defined as the quality of not being harmful to the environment. And we all know that a bicycle uh, causes very little uh, damage to the environment, if any. 
Um, as far as economic benefits, um, the League of American Bicyclists did a report and they uh, had some pretty interesting facts as far as people who ride bikes can save their companies lots and lots of money on health insurance, which we've just heard about from the UNI study. Um, we all know that bikes require no money for gas and typically there's no parking fees associated with riding a bike. Um, and if you listened last week, Derek from Northtown told us um, about e-bikes that even if you chose to own an e-bike, he says it costs about a quarter to charge up that bike and then, you know, obviously no gas or um, parking fees. So that's pretty nice. And then nationally, the bike industry is a $6 billion industry. Uh, the nation's 60 million recreational users spend about $47 billion on meals, lodging, entertainment, and then, of course, transportation. So huge economic benefits to bicycling. So now let's get into how to carry your stuff to work. Um, one of the challenges of bike commuting is you often need to bring work clothes, files, your laptop to and from work. And bicycles are typically not equipped to carry such things. So you need to think about your logistics and you need to think about how to get that stuff to work. Um, when we surveyed our Iowa Bicycle Coalition members, we had over 500 people say that they use a backpack. So backpacks are inexpensive, they're easy to find. Um, the only downfall that some of our survey takers said was that it may leave your back sweaty, um, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about that um, as we get into uh, how to get to work, how to not be sweaty, and those sorts of things. Um, but a backpack's typically easy to find. I know I have many backpacks at home I get for free at different events. Um, so if you don't have a backpack, it, they're not super expensive, but if you do have one, think about all the stuff that you can fit in while you're commuting to work. Next up, bikes usually don't come with front or rear racks, but they're available. And Dory, give us some of your expertise on front and rear racks. Um, I've had a number of different racks over the years, and it's kind of changed according to what panniers I was using. On my Surly, which is the bike I use most of the time when I commute, I specifically bought Surly racks just because they have, to me, been the most durable ones um, that I've used. Uh, one of the first panniers that I started using was a Topeak rear bag that had um, folding in and out panniers. And that the nice thing about the Topeak rack is that um, rear pannier actually slid and locked onto the rack. So it was really convenient, um, and it worked well with using other panniers on that rack as well. So um, over the years, I've had Jand, um, Surly, Topeak, and all of them have been absolutely wonderful. In regards to the panniers, I've mentioned a few. Um, for the beginning commuter, I would definitely recommend the Topeak rear bag that has these uh, saddlebags that you can zip up because it can carry a ton of stuff or you can minimalize it down just to be a, a rear top bag. Um, other ones that are out there, um, Axiom has some nice waterproof ones that are really easy to use and you can put a lot of stuff in them as well as Arkells, there's all kinds of them out there now that are made specifically. Um, there are backpacks that are actually um, panniers, so you can take it off and carry it as a backpack for convenience. Um, another one that I find very helpful is um, not only a pannier, but the, I always use a handlebar bag because you can put all kinds of extra, um, your rather than using a seat post bag, because when you have a rear rack, a lot of times it's hard to fit a seat post bag. So I'll put all, all my repair stuff in my handlebar bag, which I use okay. a Topic for that. Excellent, excellent. And Mateo, do you have anything to add to uh, panniers, saddlebags, front and rear racks? Well, yeah, I actually use the same Topeak trunk bag that Dory was talking about. Um, it's normally a trunk bag, and the sides fold out if you need additional pannier space. So it's really great. It's very flexible in case I need to carry extra things like my laptop or I have to stop by the grocery store or something, or if I need to bring extra clothes, just about anything. Um, what I do, one tip personally, is I keep all of my clothes, toiletries, and a towel at my desk at work. So it's just that's one less thing I have to worry about. It's one less thing I have to take with me, you know, in my panniers, I always, always, always keep a flat pack, a lock, and Ziploc bags of all sizes. 
and the Ziploc bags are for rainy days. Uh, you know, if my laptop, I have a big one for my laptop. I have smaller ones for my phone and other things. Um, and then daily, all I have to worry about is the little things like my lunch or, if, you know, laptop or, or extra clothing or something like that. Um, one of the things I wanted to add to that, Matteo, um, I usually keep Ziploc bags as well as always a, um, grocery sacks and a, a garbage bag just for waterproofing if need. But one yep. thing, um, I don't remember who passed this on to me, but when you buy shoes and other things, you'll see those little silica gel packs that say do not eat. <laughs> I like to throw those in, in with the Ziploc bags because it keeps things dry if they had started to get wet already. Ooh, that's so, a great tip. Yeah. Excellent. Well, and in general, um, panniers or saddlebags, they hold a lot more than you think um, when you start getting ready to go on your first uh, adventure with those bags on your bike. I'm always surprised at how much stuff I can put in there, usually more than I need, but it's amazing. <laughs> well, how about baskets on the front of the bike? Um, Dory, what experience do you have with these? So I have not had, oh, I do have a big basket. Let me take that back. I have an old Schwinn cruiser that I have old school um, front um, mesh basket, and I have the two big, like, newspaper boy baskets on the back. And I love taking that bike to the grocery store um, because you can fit so much in it. And, like, when I go to meet clients rather than driving, I will get on that cruiser bike just because it's, I can wear skirts and other things with it. And I can put my portfolio and purse right in that front basket. It's really convenient. Um, another basket that I would recommend is the grocery, pan grocery pannier. I uh, have been using the Jand one for about 10 years, and it's so versatile. Um, I put it on the rear rack, and you can just you can put groceries in it, but you can also put a backpack in it, a smaller one, or you can put a purse in it or your portfolio. Sometimes I use it just for a catch-all. Uh, anything I need to like shed real quickly, I'm like, oh, I don't need these gloves, I don't need this coat, and boom, I can just throw it in there without really having to get off my bike, unzip anything. Really, really handy. And the nice thing about that grocery um, pannier is that it is open at the top, so it doesn't seal up. So like you said, you can just toss things in there. And that's why I keep the garbage sack in there, the plastic garbage bag, because then if I have anything that needs to stay dry, I can quickly put it in there, cinch it up, and wrap it up, and put it right back in that pannier. Great ideas. And all of your ideas on the plastic, uh, plastic weighs very little, so it's so nice to have those Ziploc bags handy in the garbage bags. So another option um, for getting your stuff to work is using a trailer. So Andrea, give us some uh, tips on trailers. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. trailers are usually uh, really great for carrying kids, but you can use those styles of trailers to carry really anything. Um, a burly trailer is kind of the typical standard child hauling trailer, and that company makes trailers for carrying just about anything, like your dog or your groceries or anything you can think, you know, something you find on the curb on the way home that you want to take home with you. Um <laughs> Trailers are really great for that. Uh, you can also maybe get away with uh, not having a second car, possibly, if you have a trailer. I have one trailer at my house that all five of my housemates and I use, and we share it together, and it fits onto a lot of bikes really easily also, so it kind of alleviates some, just a lot of weekly stress, I guess, of trying to move something big if we only have one car and six people, so it makes it a little easier. Yeah, and you can get away with a lot more than you think with the trailer, too. So, And it's always fun to try different things out if you're just maybe, you know, moving across town and you want to just try out and see if you can carry that computer or a bunch of books or something. It's it's a nice challenge. Right. And, you know, that picture doesn't do justice to the different options of trailers. No. Um, the ones that are specifically for animals or for children, you know, are much different. They come with seat belts and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when you're not hauling the kids, you can use that space still for, you know, if you're like, uh, you leave from work and you're going to go for a camp out, you can have all your oh. camp gear in that same bag or in same trailer. That is exactly what I started using to camp with, actually, it was a burly trailer. And people give you more room on the road because they think you have a kid, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you just have That's a great idea. <laughs> so, Andrew, do you know what name of the, there's a trailer that you can pull behind the bike that almost looks like, you know, when you walk with a golf cart, 
where it, it attaches to oh, the sure. seat post. And it's, really... it's a lot more, yeah, it's not as uh, large as a burly, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a little more compact. A friend of mine owns one and loves it, takes it to the farmer's market every year. Yeah, Burley makes that trailer, and so it's it's the brand, and then this, I can't think of the name, but the style that attaches to the seat post is even easier to work with because, yeah, then you can just take it off and kind of, it's like a, a grocery cart, your own personal one. Nice. So, and some nice. of them, they're easier to outfit with, um, you know, just big Tupperwares or uh, like big rubber main containers, and they're easy to attach like lights to and things also, so it's kind of like having a, you know, like a trailer you'd have for your car, having a trailer for your bike is the same idea. Okay. Well, I think, you know, in conclusion, as far as all of these different ways to carry your stuff, there's no right or wrong way to carry things to work when bike commuting. The best advice is to use simple solutions that are easily available. And then once you commute a few times, you'll figure out if you need to upgrade or change things up. Uh, one of our survey takers recommended trying your route and carrying all your gear to work on the weekend before you go um, to actually go to work. Try it on the weekends, you know, so you can figure out your route, you can figure out if you have too much gear, if you figure out, you know, you're weighted wrong on one side or how a trailer works. So then you'll feel more confident when you're actually going to work in the same setup. So, I'm sure everyone's wondering, how do I get ready after a sweaty commute to work? And this is definitely something that people think about, you know, if you're in an office situation, um, I, you have to dress up for, your, for work, what the heck, how are you going to get to work and still look good? Um, one of our survey takers, Amy W., who bikes eight miles, says, just allow enough time. Don't push it and you'll end up sweating much less than you think. So, Mateo, give us some tips on how you get to work. I know I think that you have an advantage, which I also do at my office, where we do have showers on site. But yeah. uh, give us some ideas. Yeah, well, like I said, I keep my clothes and toiletries and towel at my desk. And I have a 12-mile commute, so I'm lucky that I have a shower. Um, that way, like, when I get in, in the morning, I'm, com I'm able to completely shower and clean up when I arrive. But I know others aren't so lucky, so you just have to get a little creative. You know, some options are using a bathroom sink to freshen up or even moist towelettes like you have on the screen. Um, you'd be amazed at how some phone will work wonders. <laughs> or, you know, or, or maybe you work near a health club that you could use that you could clean up there and then go to work. Um, if you're lucky and you don't live too far from work, you can just bike at an easy pace so you don't work up a sweat. And then that way you could even bike to work in your work clothes. Um, I learned that when I was living in the Netherlands. Most everyone there bikes at a relatively casual pace, so they just bike in their daily clothes. It's, it's completely normal to see a Dutch person biking to work in a suit. I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, our survey, we had over 1,000 people take the survey, and 47% 40 per, of those people said they do change clothes at work. But 21% says they go at a pace where they don't get sweaty. So it's exactly what you just said, Mateo. Yeah. Uh, Andrea, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, I think that, um, I guess mostly just also realizing that it's it's it can be intimidating at first to maybe put a helmet on and ruin your hair, and then you think you're going to get really sweaty and the clothes are the wrong thing and you maybe forgot something and you don't have the right pair of socks, but... Um, it's just one day, and if you go through that day and you figure out, I need to have this next time, or this was the wrong thing to wear, maybe I'll try out a different pair of shorts to ride in and then have that secret stash at work. Um, it just takes time, you know, actually riding and actually getting out there and commuting. You might look kind of silly, because I know my rain gear looks absolutely ridiculous, but I'm dry <laughs> when I show up to work, and it wasn't the most expensive rain gear, so it's really cost-effective. Um, I think that's part of it is just trying it and doing it and maybe going to the Walgreens halfway through your commute to work or something or dipping out for lunch and grabbing that extra deodorant stick or something and just figuring it out. That's the, I think one of the most intimidating things is yourself on the bike. So but you just have to try it. Yeah, and I think all three of you have mentioned that once you figure it out, once you try it a few times and figure it out, you're the 
the feeling of being stress-free and getting to work after a little bit of a workout is well, well worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll agree if you can learn to give yourself extra time, because I always kept all my toiletries at the office, so I'd, I would leave home, and by the time I got there, I would have, you know, easily 15, 20 minutes, so I could cool down a little bit, you know, freshen up in the way I needed to if I had to shower or if I didn't. But then, you know, having all of that at the office is the best way so you don't have, you know, sweaty makeup or, you know, you can uh, redo your hair if need. But having an extra set of toiletries is definitely um, recommended. I completely agree with that. So then our last uh, topic is the weather. And we, living in Iowa, you know that the weather changes and the weather changes often. Um, and it's definitely top of mind when you are getting ready to get on your bike. Uh, Robert R., one of our survey takers, warns bike commuters to be prepared for changes in weather even between morning and evening. Uh, obviously, the temperatures can rise and fall throughout the workday, but also the clouds can roll in, temperature can drop drastically or rise drastically. So, uh, Dory, give us some tips about riding and figuring out the weather. I always have, um, in one of my panniers, I always have extra layers. So, if you know, if or the other thing is always having rain gear um, because we never know when that weather pattern is going to change. So, I agree with Andrea. Um, you can buy very inexpensive rain gear. And just the other thing is a lot of times the legs on those are wide, so make sure you have one of those reflective straps so you can strap along the bottom so you don't get that caught in your chain. Mm-hmm. The other thing is... Sometimes we forget that if we go out in the afternoon and it's nice out, but it, it still gets cold at night. Make sure to have, you know, gloves or maybe just an extra uh, long sleeve T-shirt, socks. Some of these things you can roll up and put in the bottom of the pannier and it doesn't take a whole lot of room. Very, very smart. Uh, do, do either of the other two have any ideas on uh, weather tips? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, just... Maybe while you're riding to work, be prepared, and then on the way home from work, I definitely worry less, and I will just, if I'm just going straight home, just get wet if I don't have what I prepared for myself, and then um, if I need to update my rain kit or my snow kit or whatever, just kind of find things that I already have around the house that could work. Um I try to not go too crazy on the with the technical weather gear with commuting because I think it gets a little overwhelming and then I am worried that I don't have the right pieces for the right weather and realizing that if I just put a giant old sweater over what I'm wearing and, and get to work and I'm warm and I just have that sweater always there, then it's just an easier easier way to get going. Yeah, and even if you, you know, don't have the cheap poncho, I think they're like a dollar at uh, most, you know, Walgreens, Target, sporting stores. Even to to take a garbage bag. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Um, As long as you make sure you have it tied down so that you're not a a big sale behind your uh, (laughs) biking. The other thing I wanted to put in there, I have um, some friends that are a little newer to biking, and they'll just look at the forecast like, oh, it's going to be a low of this, a high of this, and they don't look at the details. And so taking that extra little bit of time to maybe, if you're going to start commuting, start getting in the habit of looking at the hourly forecast as well as the wind speed and direction because that can change your commute significantly. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Mateo, yes. why do you like bike commuting? Oh, well, um, earlier you mentioned the health benefits and the saving money aspect, which I certainly like. But the truth is it just biking to work just makes me so happy. Um, I work in corporate America, and biking to work really helps me deal with my stress. So, like, by the time I get to work in the morning, I'm in a great mood. And then after a stressful day at work, you know, you can just hop on your bike and just ride off the stress. Yeah, by the Um, time you get home, you've probably forgotten about it. Yeah, my commute actually tripled in length this year from 4 to 12 miles, and I couldn't be happier. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, how about you, Andrea? What do you enjoy most about uh, commuting on a bike? Yeah, I'd say the getting to ride your bike. I mean, I think a lot of people struggle to find time in the day to work out, so that's part of it. I can go as fast or as slow as I want to for my 
whatever ride. Um, I'm envious of the longer commute that Mateo has because mine is only about one to two miles for both of my jobs. And the nice thing about that is if I do forget anything, I can head home really quickly and grab something, and then there's even extra commuting. So um, it's just nice to to know that my riding, it's adding up every week, and it, I get stronger each week, and I, you know, it's just a less of a worry, I suppose, and more of an enjoyment than wondering if I have gas in my car or if I even know where my keys are or things like that and just getting on my bike and going. Definitely. A parking spot. <laughs> yeah, and not having to pay for gas or parking is oh, uh, can be a pretty big deal to a lot of um, people who maybe live in an or work in an area, you know, downtown in their city where they have to pay for parking. Yeah. Definitely. Well, cost effective. Yeah, definitely cost effective. Mm -hmm. Well, Carrie S., uh, you see it on your screen, you don't need fancy gear or really anything special. So if you're really nervous about commuting on your first time, you probably have everything you need already at home. It's just a matter of once you get into commuting, then you may want to uh, update what you have. But really, you know, like Andrea said, take a big sweater, keep keep it in your bag to keep you warm. It, it really doesn't take anything fancy until you're ready for the fancy gear. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And then you can kind of treat yourself to the fancy gear. That's the... It's really it's really easy to outfit your bike and, and make it kind of a luxury vehicle versus buying a luxury car and trying to outfit it the other direction. My <laughs> my bikes cost more than my car. We can, we can put it that way and um it wasn't hard for that to happen, but <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and and the yeah. maintenance overall too, I think in the long run maintenance for yourself as a person and maintenance for your bike as a vehicle um, is much less expensive than anything I could do for my car. Yeah, well said when you say maintenance for your for your body and for your vehicle. That's very well said. It's really important. Yeah. Well, a couple of questions to throw out to you guys, uh, experts. Um, how about Dory? Give us an example of a, a couple of your favorite accessories for bike commuting? Um, two of my favorite accessories would be, first of all, I got um, a set of fenders a couple years, or actually more than that. I keep forgetting how long I've had them, but for about four years I've had fenders, and it makes a world of difference. Not a big investment, and it it does a world of difference it, during a rainy, rainy season, muddy, you know, sand, everything. It does protect your gear as well as you. The other accessory um, is I added a hub generator light this year, which really right. helps with, you know, when the, where our days are shorter, when you have to commute in the, you know, when it's dark in the morning or dark at night, I don't have to worry about batteries and, oh, did I recharge my headlight or my rear light? Um, it has been just a blessing um, to add that. So it was, um, I added that, my dog bought it for me for Christmas. Oh, so it's been a, yeah, they're so nice. <laughs> and for those of you who maybe don't know what a hub generator is, it literally, you pedal to produce the power that um, will light up uh, for some people just a headlight, for some people a headlight and a taillight. Uh, I have a hub generator and I actually have a USB port on my bike so I can charge my phone while I'm pedaling somewhere and then at night use the same hub generator to uh, have lights on the front and back of my bike. But they're... They're awesome. Although I had to pay for mine myself, my dog did not help me out there. <laughs> um, just a couple more questions. Uh, how about Andrea? Um, give us maybe just a high level of uh, what do you do if you have a mechanical problem while you're biking to work? Oh, sure. Um, uh, first thing before, maybe even before you leave, I know Iowa City has some fix-it stands around town, so maybe kind of factor those into your commute and just be aware where they are and they usually have pumps and little tools to pretty much everything you need to fix your flat and then making sure that you have what your bike needs and these aren't even things you have to have with you all the time it could be as simple as knowing the size of your tire and what tube you will need to put in there so you know step by step figure out what your bike needs figure out what your route needs and then maybe by the time you've 
gotten that all figured out, you realize you're carrying everything you need. Um, I do a lot of clinics here at the bike shop for actually just for women for fixing flats, and I think they're all really amazed by how little you need to carry with you. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as a tube, a tire lever, a pump, and that's it. You can carry a multi-tool if you want. But part of it, just like trying out anything new, it's it's you're going to be a little uncomfortable maybe fixing a mechanical, but and it might take longer than you want. Um, but the first time you do it will be the hardest, and then it gets better from there. And you can always call for a ride. I have definitely had to do that before, and no harm in getting some support. But if right. it's a nice day out and you have the time, maybe call the support person and tell them to bring you a flat kit and you can fix it out there instead of driving home. So, Right, definitely. Yeah, and that's the last thing about it. Before you even, hopefully nothing happens because you can do little maintenance things to always check over your bike. And um, hopefully if you go to any local bike shop near you, they'll show you how to do those safety checks because it should be a, a free service when you walk in. So little things you can check over can make your your bike happy and and it's free, you know, things like air and uh chain lube's not free, but an eight dollar bottle will last you a very long time and keeps your bike right. really happy. Right. And it and should you should be in the habit every time you get on your bike to just do a basic safety check of making sure you have air in the tire, making sure that your brakes are working and like you said, making sure that uh, your chain is uh, set up to be able to get you to where you're going. Yep. Well, uh, one last question for Mateo. Um, do you commute solo, or do you usually have uh, people with you that commute to your work? Um, I actually, I do a little of both. I recruit friends whenever I can. Nice. Um, I'm a hugely social writer. I love to ride with other people. Um, it's one of, the thing I, one of the things I love about cycling is it can be a very social sport. And so, like, this morning, for instance, I started my commute with one person and finished it with a different person. Oh, well, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's really great because, like I said, my commute tripled this year, so it's about an hour each way. And I tell you, when you're biking with a friend, an hour seems like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, the time just flies. We, we have a great time. We're talking. We're laughing and having a great time. So it doesn't even feel like you're biking to work, you know. It just feels like you're out with a friend. Yeah. And I think you told me one time, this may have been years ago, but you make a point, every person you pass on the bike trail, you uh, give them a high or a wave, and it just I changes do. your attitude for the day. Yeah. And, and you, as you start to commute more, you see the same people over and over. Oh, so you sure. you actually kind of develop, you know, friendships with people, too. I've, I've actually developed friendships with people just on my way to work. That's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Well, experts, thank you so much for being um, on this webinar today, uh, Andrea, Dory, and Mateo. I feel like you guys have offered a lot of great tips and advice for people who are thinking about commuting, and hopefully uh, somebody steps it up and gives it a try, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good. Well, hopefully today's webinar helped everyone with great commuting ideas for our experts. And for more info, be sure to download our free ebook, which you can see right on the screen. Um, if, uh, also, make sure you stop by your local bike shop and, of course, ask fellow coworkers who commute. Uh, everyone's a great resource. And thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week for another Bike Commuting webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.